I am really, really, really excited to share with you today's author, Miss Maria Desmondi. She is an old friend of mine, and I am Heather. I started Bookstell Sur. I used to be Maestra Robertson, and then I got to start Bookstell Sur so I could have many, many new books and great books for classrooms like yours. And so I'm really, really lucky to share today the book of my very good friend, Maria Desmondi, and she has written it in English, and then she got it translated by the great Teresa Malauer in Spanish for you all. So it is a pleasure to introduce her. We are excited to have Maria here because she's not only an author herself, but she's also the publisher of many, many books. Maybe a lot of those that are behind her on those shelves she has published. That means that she works with all kinds of authors that publish books for you to love. She was a teacher for many years and she is from Michigan. So that is a, that is a state in the Midwest and many of you are already in the Midwest. So without further ado, Maria, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Heather. S should I begin? Yeah, so tell us, say, like greet everyone, say hello, yeah. and then when you're ready, tell them how you're going to read to them today, because it's so fun and unique. Excellent. All right, so boys and girls, uh, again, my name is Maria, and today I will be reading my book, Spaghetti in a Hot Dog Bun, Having the Courage to Be Who You Are, and I'm going to be using this real fancy thing called a document camera so that you can see the pages really well. All right, so boys and girls, I will begin. And if you have any questions, think about them and you can ask during question and answer time. Here we go. All right, spaghetti and a hot dog bun. So I wrote the words, I'm the author, and it was illustrated by Kim Shaw. Here we go. The delicious smell of breakfast filled the air as Lucy's grandpa handed her a plate. Lucy smeared ketchup on her toast. She turned to her grandpa and said, Papa Gino, Harriet said she's never heard of ketchup on toast. Her family uses butter and jelly. So boys and girls, you can see that there's a cardinal throughout this book. I love the bird, the cardinal. And so when I decided I wanted to help other people to get their books into the world, I named that company Cardinal Rule Press. It's okay, not everyone likes the same thing, Lucy. It doesn't mean one person is right or wrong. We're all different. What a boring world it would be if we were all exactly alike. Do you remember what's really important, Papa Gino asked? Yes, Papa. Even if we are different from others on the outside, we all have a heart with feelings on the inside. Boys and girls, can you put your hand on your heart right now? It's important for us to remember and I'm doing the same thing right now, that each of us has a heart that is beating inside of us, which means we all have feelings. And it's important to think about that. That's my girl. Remember, when you treat others with love and kindness, you are doing the right thing. Papa Gino replied. On the school bus, Lucy and her friend Harriet pulled out some paper and crayons. Sitting across from them was Ralph. As usual, Ralph sat alone, staring out the window. He looked over at them and rolled his eyes. Good readers ask questions. And one of the questions I ask on this page is why is Ralph sitting alone? In the classroom, Lucy sat down near the teacher. Ralph carelessly hurried over and tripped on Lucy's foot. Before long, he was glaring at her. Ralph whispered, woof, I can't see the book with this poodle in front of me. Lucy could hear him giggling behind her. Oh no, why did it have to be me, she wondered. Good readers pay attention to picture clues. I'm noticing that it's friendship week at their school. It says, share a smile. During lunch, Harriet shouted one of her silly jokes over the other children's voices. As the girls ate, their bellies shook with laughter. Across the table, Ralph hollered, yuck, that's the disgusting smell. Who ever heard of eating spaghetti in a hot dog bun? 
boys and girls, I notice that Ralph is sitting alone again. Tony and the other children at the table turned away from Ralph, shaking their heads. Ralph continued, poor little Lucy with her hair so poofy. Tears filled Lucy's eyes and she began to cry. Oh, I would probably cry too if someone was doing something like that to me over and over again. On the way home, Lucy thought about what had happened. Maybe Ralph is mean to me because he thinks being different is bad. I wish he would stop teasing me. What is he doing there? Luce, slowly, Lucy stepped off the bus. How was your day, Papa Gino asked. Fine, she mumbled. Papa reached over and pulled a crayon out of her hair. How did this happen, he asked. Lucy didn't say a word. That night, as Papa Gino tucked Lucy into bed, he asked, is everything all right at school? Lucy rolled over. He sat down and whispered, always remember if something's not right, we can work on fixing it together. It's not that easy, thought Lucy. How do I stop Ralph from teasing me? How can he have a heart and be so mean? Lucy had a hard time falling asleep, worrying what would happen tomorrow. Boys and girls, when I was a little girl, I used to always sleep with a yellow blanket because it made me feel safe. And so I asked the illustrator if they could include the yellow blanket for Ruby. I'm wondering if you maybe have a special stuffed animal or a blanket that you sleep with that makes you feel safe in bed. The following day, Lucy was surprised to find that Ralph was leaving her alone until Lucy took the bag Ralph handed her. Inside were dog bones and a note that read, Lucy, Lucy eats stinky food that puts us in a big bad mood. Lucy, Lucy, hair shaped like a cone. Here's a treat for you, a yummy dog bone. Oh, boys and girls, look at Lucy's face. You can tell she's not happy. The beating of Lucy's heart was so loud, she knew everyone around her could hear it. Stop. It hurts my feelings when you do this, Ralph, Lucy said. Please stop. Ralph turned and walked away. Now, I'm just going to point out that the children sitting here are seeing what's happening, but they're not saying anything. We call that a bystander. And do you know, we want you to have the courage. If you see something that's happening and it's not right, we want you to stand up and we want you to tell a trusted adult or we want you to say something. It was recess time and Lucy played alone. She didn't want to tell her teacher about Ralph. She was afraid of being a tattletale. Lucy wished Papa Gino was there to help. What should I do? She asked herself over and over again. The bell rang as recess ended. Help! cried a child off in the distance. Tony yelled, Ralph got himself stuck at the top of the monkey bars. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Oh no. So everyone thinks it's funny that Ralph is stuck. Hmm. This is my chance. I'll go tell Ralph how mean he really is. M-E-A-N mean. Lucy stomped off toward the monkey bars. She looks angry. You can tell in the way that the illustrator made her face. Look at her hands. Her hands are clenched in a fist like this. Sometimes when people get angry, they do that with their hands. When she reached Ralph, Lucy paused. She looked him in the eye and said, what you did was so mean. But standing before Ralph, Lucy could hear her papa's words. Ralph did have a heart with feelings. So boys and girls, even though Ralph was being unkind to Lucy here, he was in danger and someone needed to help him. So even though he was being mean, she realized what Papa Gino taught her, everyone has a heart with feelings. In that moment, Lucy decided what she would do. She saw tears in Ralph's eyes. He hesitated to move and whispered, I'm scared. Lucy reached out and said, here, 
take my hand, and she helped him down. Wow. Even after he was being mean to her, she helped him because that was the right thing to do. The two walked back to the classroom without saying a word. As the bus pulled up to Lucy's stop, Ralph reached over and handed her a picture. Lucy was amazed by what she saw. Thanks, she muttered softly. After she got off the bus, Lucy smiled and said, Papa, there's this boy, Ralph, who was really mean to me. Today he was in trouble and I helped him. Papa Gino hugged Lucy and replied, that took a lot of courage. It wasn't the easiest thing to do. You chose to treat others the way you want to be treated, Lucy. I'm so proud of you. As they walked home, she asked him what was for dinner. When Papa Gino said spaghetti, Lucy knew immediately what she would have for lunch the next day. Her favorite sandwich, spaghetti in a hot dog bun. So Lucy did not stop being herself when someone teased her. She continued to be herself. And boys and girls, at the very end, there are some really nice words I wanted to read to you. It says, you are out of this world special. Number one, be proud. Number two is to love yourself. Number three, have courage. Number four, practice giving. Number five, make each day count. Number six, celebrate differences. Seven, spread kindness. Eight, share a smile. Nine, forgive. And 10, never give up. Boys and girls, I try when I wake up in the morning, I try to live my life with these 10 inspirations or these 10 rules, I would say, because when I can look at these and remember to do these things within my heart, I have a good day. And that is the end. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing. Maria, now I know before we get into some questions, the first one I want you to address for everyone, because I know they're thinking it is what inspired you to write this story? Is it about you? Because you did tell us a lot of things that were like you. Yes, boys and girls, um, Spaghetti in a Hot Dog Bun is based loosely off of my own experiences as a child. I do eat spaghetti inside of a hot dog bun. Mm-hmm. What? You might think it's gross, but I think it's delicious. Oh um, I also was teased for this big hair that I have. I can make it even bigger. <laughs> um, and I was, I was teased for who I was when I was a kid, but I continue to be myself, which is most important. And so I wanted other kids to know that even if you're different and people say things about your differences, find people who love you and care about you just the way you are. That is beautiful. Thank you. We have quite a few questions. Okay. Um, and I think we're going to start with Sophia. Sophia, you have your hand raised. I love all the um, Sophia. So if you want to unmute, don't turn on your camera, but just unmute. You can ask your question. How old is he? How old is, is um, the author or the girl in the story? The girl in the story. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's a good question. As a writer, we don't always put the ages in there. So I want you to be able to see yourself in the story. So how old are you? Well, let's say that Lucy is six then. <laughs> Thank you, Sophia. Yanelli, you're next. Do you want to unmute and ask your question? My question is that I love the story. My little teddy bear that helps me sleep in the night is like the Care Bear from the movie of the Care Bear and it's purple. Oh, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. And I love, um, and I love purple. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. All right, Diego, you're next. What's your question? How much books had you had um, made? 
Oh, that is a good question. I have written 10 books that are at the bookstore. But Diego, when I was in kindergarten, I started writing stories. So if I were to add up all the stories that I wrote in school, maybe a hundred. Oh, is you it hard to make books? Well, Sometimes Diego, like you know what, Diego? Do you think it's hard to write stories? Mm, some pages are easy, but when you write like too much or too much, it gets your brain keeps more confused. But next, when you do it, next you get addicted and it's more fun. <laughs> yes, I agree. There are some days that my brain hurts. And there are other days where it comes very easy. And actually my finger, I write so much that my finger has a bump on it because I like to use, you can see, I like to write with pencils and my dog chewed this one. Um, but I, I'm just like you, I like to write with a pencil and paper. And sometimes I write so much that it actually hurts my finger. <laughs> so oh I'm with goodness. you, Diego. Yeah. We have a we have a question in the chat. Oh, yeah. sorry, Diego. I do um, I paint too much and my fing my fingers start to hurt. I got yeah, I bet. Thank you, Diego. All right, sorry, sorry, Diego. Thank you for your question. We have a question in the chat from um, Maestro Gonzalez, and I believe Maestro Gonzalez is in Illinois. One of our friends in Illinois. And Maestro Gonzalez's class is wondering, how long does it take you to write a book? Um, I, it depends. The first oh, draft- Sorry, Maestro Gonzalez is in Wisconsin, even. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Um, it's not too far from Michigan. Mm -mm. And the first draft of the story usually comes out pretty quickly for me, but the part that takes a long time is the editing and the revising. So, fixing my mistakes, adding details, taking things away. That part takes a really long time. Naomi, you have a question? Go ahead. What inspired you to make books? I was inspired by kids like you. Um, I was a teacher for many years and it made me really sad when kids in the classroom, um, when they felt sad for being teased for things about themselves. And I thought, gosh, I want kids to be able to read a book that reminds them that they're awesome just the way they are. And guess what? I couldn't find a book like that. In the year 2005, which was a long time ago, I could not find a book that had real kids that talked about courage. I found books about dinosaurs. I found books about teddy bears. Could not find a book that had real kids, that had different skin colors, that had different abilities. And I wanted kids to be able to open up my book and say, hmm, I can relate, I can see myself, I can connect. And so that's what inspired me to write this story. That is wonderful. I love that. <laughs> Thanks, Noemi. Um, Jacob, you are next. Can you unmute and ask your question? Why did the girl save the boy even though the boy was being mean to the girl? That's that some amazing really, comprehension, too. It is. Oh. It really is. You know, um, if someone were in danger and maybe they weren't a very kind person, um, Lucy was taught that, you know, kindness is in our heart, everyone's hearts. And so a lot of times when people are not a very nice person, it's because someone has treated them wrongly. And so she helped him because she knew it was the right thing to do. He was in danger, he was scared. And even though he wasn't always kind to her, she set her boundaries. She walked up to him and said, what you did was not okay. But then she helped him down. So she, she set her boundaries and saying, the way you're treating me is not okay. When I know that you're scared and you're in danger, I'm going to help you down. Um, so it's, it's important to think about that. It's not okay for people to treat you unkindly. But I also want you to think about why that person is doing that. A lot of times it's because someone isn't treating them kindly. So Lulu, you're next. Um, I like your book. Thank you. I mean, single article. I have something that I sleep with at the night. 
Oh, thanks, Lulu, for sharing. And I love how, did you guys hear, friends, how Lulu went between English and Spanish? Because that's how our brains work, right? We do both, los dos. Melina, you're next. Can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Go ahead. Um, I love your book because um, it's not, because um, I like how the girl helped the boy because he was, even though if he was stuck and not, if he was not being mean to her and not treating him good, even though if we're different, we still got to help other people that are not nice to us or stuff. And I have something that sleeps with oh me every single day. I think that's wonderful. Day. You know what? You, you hit the nail on the head. Kindness is really important and our world needs kindness. Our world needs love and kindness. We Can I tell you what I sleep with every night? Sure, tell me. I sleep with my little brother every night. Oh. I snuggle with him. He's three years old. That is like awesome. I sleep with my mom and my dad every single night, and it, it makes me happy to have a little brother. Oh, lucky. That's great. Lucky, yeah. lucky. And where, where you can find the book, your book, where we can find it? Well, you can find it at the library. You can find it at, um, online. You can go to uh, YouTube or KidsTube, and I'm, I read it on there. All my stories are read on YouTube and KidsTube, so you have access to those stories. Okay, I'll go to the library tomorrow to see what's yes. gonna be fun. Great. Okay, Ruby, you are, have the last question. And Ruby, I just wanna say you have lots of friends on this chat. And so it seems like you are a good friend. So congratulations. <laughs> go ahead, Ruby. Hey, look, um, ¿cuándo vamos a aprender esas cámaras? Oh. We are almost done. And you know what, friends? We I have a couple of things to say. Do you have a question? Y también me encantó su libro. Se voy a poner un aplauso. Oh, okay. Thank you, Ruby. Muchas gracias. Me encantó su libro. You love her book. Thank you, Ruby. Muchas gracias. Okay. I think, friends, we are... We oh we have Houston, Texas joining us. How lovely. I didn't know if Texas schools were still in session because I know lots of them in Austin today. It's their last day of school. That's where I am. Um, okay, friends, we are almost out of time. Um, I know that there's some questions in the chat and Miss Maria will be reading them and she'll respond to them. We have a couple of announcements, so we don't have time for any more questions, but a couple of things I want to remind you all of is that we will have more author talks starting in September. And Miss Maria has author talks too next year that we'll also share with Bookstelster. So some of her authors will share. And then finally, Miss Maria has an author talk for, Maria, who's, who's the Latinx panel targeted for it? For the teachers or for everyone? It's, no, it's for teachers. It's for classrooms. Yep, it's for okay. classrooms. And it's next week on June 2nd at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard. And we have four authors of Latinx books. So um, yeah, join us. We'd love for you to join us and we'll put the link in the chat. Um, and then lastly, I just wanna say it has been a long school year. I know for lots of our friends, our friends in Waukesha, our friends in Uvalde and everywhere, like so many friends joined us today probably because they had their they're joining virtually from their home so thank you everyone for joining us for being so strong and and um persevering through the school year i know it has been challenging but together we are all better and spending time with all of you today was wonderful and we love it